Welcome to Superhero Stuff You Should Know, but today we're some kind of suicide squad. Today, <laughs> it is I, the man who knows usually too much about Batman, but talking about something different. This is Ben, with me as usual. It's Andrew, everybody. What's going on? It's time to learn about the squad that fucking dies too much, <laughs> but maybe just enough. Yes. <laughs> and meanwhile, our co-host. It's me, Zachary Jackson Brown, and Ben took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, what are we, some kind of suicide squad? So I guess I'll just go with uh, squad goals. Hashtag squad goals. How about that? I forgot about that. <laughs> and as part of our squad today, uh, we have our special guest, Alex. Please introduce yourself and your podcast. Sure. Um, my name is Alex. I actually have two podcasts. Um, I have the one that I told you guys about, what me and we basically... Mm -hmm. talk I, i'll have like rotating guests but um we'll talk about like movies tv basically anything and then i have another one called tangential exchange where me and a friend progressively get more drunk and try to stay <laughs> on topic <laughs> and, like, both of us having add you could imagine how that basically doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i, I mean, think i'd be perfect for that sober. podcast oh yeah yeah that <laughs> if yeah. me and you are like uh brothers basically because like every time <laughs> every time i hear it i'm like i can relate because like you'll go on the tangent i'm like i don't see how this relates but then like i also like after listening, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man after listening i'm just like okay yeah i kind of see how this would connect i guess like uh i, I get it <laughs> it's just how my brain works bro it's like a like a laser. Yeah. Now it's yeah. the opposite of a laser. It's like a <laughs> laser laser fire pointing m multiple There's ways. The wrong direction. Fire. It's like the cat <laughs> chasing the laser. <laughs> <laughs> That's more what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, Alex, uh, we I I knew of uh, you know what mean because you sent me the the stuff and you guys have covered a lot of different you know comic book related movies uh, as well as WandaVision. That was really cool. Uh, and that stuff. Uh, how did you? A quick question. How did you guys find us? Um, actually, it's a funny story. Um, so you guys were on my uh, watch later list on uh, YouTube because I saw oh, one nice. of your, <laughs> one of your things, and I I had uh, gotten my COVID shot, and I was sick, and so I was sitting there, I was like, okay, I think I was either looking up or you guys were on my watch later, and I saw that, I'm like, let me check mm -hmm. this out, and then like I watched it, and I'm like, this is really good. And awesome. it was the um, it was the Batman, uh, the Batman, uh, nineteen eighty two, I think, yeah. maybe that one. Our debut, okay. kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, after that, I just kind of did like my own kind of deep dive into y'all's uh, content. So like, I was nice. like, let me watch another one and another one. But yeah, awesome. We appreciate Sweet. it. Sweet, thank you. I know sure. uh, you're also a, a, a Batman fan. I think so. I saw that you even have a pretty sweet Pattinson <laughs> cosplay. Oh yeah, uh, I actually bought that. <laughs> I, I considered wearing that, but I was just like, "It's I'm gonna look like a crazy person if I show up on like your podcast, especially a video thing, first time meeting me, and I'm just in the full Batman suit." <laughs> I mean, hey, if you did that, I would be in my Batflex suit, and we could do. Maybe we'll do that another time. Yeah, it wouldn't be <laughs> that crazy. Yeah, not the, not also, the weirdest maybe not thing. Not during the summer. Yeah, also, not during the summer. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> My so. AC is out, so I was like, uh, I don't want to die today. It's, my AC is out in my house, so I'm just like, yeah, I don't really want to wear like multiple layers of like a costume <laughs> and be sweating to death in here. No wonder Batman's so angry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no wonder he works at night. God. Have you guys seen the college humor uh, sketch where um, I think it's he, he talks about how he passes out because of how hot the, the <laughs> costume is. <laughs> and it's the it's the bail version. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna be completely honest, full disclosure. I, I, I black out half the time in the suit. <laughs> it's great. He is on the <laughs> East Coast, so ton of shit ton of humidity. I mean it's basically there. New Jersey and New York, right? Yeah. So it's a little bit warm but it's still in the summer in New York, it's gonna be real hot. It's gonna be terrible, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Oh. Must really suck. Uh so yeah. Anyway <laughs> Uh, great to have you on, Alex, and uh, we'll go into our main topic, which is the Suicide Squad. I guess tell us about your familiarity in general, or if anything, with the Suicide Squad. I'll be honest with you, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why the suicide like, because for a while now, like they're making the Suicide Squad like a thing, and I'm like, I like some of it, but I'm just like, it's one of those things where I'm like, why this though? 
Yeah, I, don't I, know, like, <laughs> I know. I feel the exact same way. You guys are brothers. Like, why make this a thing? Let's let's get a Booster Gold movie or some shit. Why right. are we doing Suicide Squad over and over and over? Yeah. <laughs> I like James Gunn, though. I mean, th they found the right guy to bring me in again, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. Captain Boomerang and shit? Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, Harley Quinn's in there. It's cool. Sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, Zach, your familiarity with uh, Suicide Squad outside of... Probably outside of the, the air film and the upcoming one, of course. Outside of that, really? Just through the uh, Justice League cartoon and uh, I think Justice League Unlimited both featured some... Episodes of Task Force X, which, you know, I'm sure they couldn't use the word Suicide oh, Squad on yeah. a children's cartoon. Yeah. Um, so that was my first introduction to them. I definitely like the concept uh, of bad guys, even like second tier, third tier, Z-list villains sometimes being used as fodder and kind of put into these positions where they are expendable. So I do really like the concept. Um I can see why they wanted to make it happen and why that first one used so many Batman villains to kind of pique the general audience's familiarity. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm excited for the new movie. I don't want a Booster Gold movie. <laughs> Come on, man. That'd be cool. <laughs> I don't know. Something about him. Talking oh, yeah, to that little you're, robot. You're a hater. He doesn't look like an ape, though, so it should be all right. Yeah. That is a good point. <laughs> he talk, I don't know. Some, something I just don't like about him. Maybe it's his costume okay. and his attitude. Who knows? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Andrew, your stuff with uh, Suicide Squad. Uh, almost the same opinion as, as Alex. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why they keep making it a thing. I guess because they're ch cheaper. They don't, they don't require as many effects as like a Man of Steel or something. It, it depends on who you're recruiting, but yeah. I guess so, yeah. I mean, it must be a smaller budget than the other ones they do. Like oh, even James Gunn one, I don't know. That's James Gunn like got maybe a bigger one, but <laughs> none of them really have, like, crazy uh, powers. Well, I guess King Shark at this point, but yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, like, it's fine, <laughs> I guess, but I would... I'd, I'd rather them, like, come out with something else, something new. Like and they Gold. got the Suicide Squad. Yeah, Booster Gold. But, but they got the Suicide Squad game coming out, too. Like, yeah. I'll, I mean, okay, I guess. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It was just the worst fucking Warner Brothers movie they ever fucking made. <laughs> One of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> like Rachel McAdams and Mean Girls being like this, trying to make Suicide Squad happen. <laughs> this script we're about to go over. I'm gonna let's just let's just spoil it. It's better than what we got. Yeah. Okay. That's will it, it be yeah. better than the James Gunn one? I we don't know my, yet. I have my doubts. We'll see. We're releasing this the same week that the James Gunn movie comes out, so people will find out pretty shortly after listening to this episode. Uh, Are we about to reveal just how much Ayer was fucked? Not really. So okay. let's go into this a little bit. So as you guys saw from the title, the uh, this episode is the Unmade Suicide Squad script. Hell yeah. Uh, brought to us by, uh, this thumbnail brought to us by uh, our wonderfully talented Zachary Jackson Brown. <laughs> <laughs> you point the wrong drag. way. <laughs> no. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this camera thing is crazy. It's reversed. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're going to try to keep this good for the audio only people, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, there may be some references to our upped uh, video game. Yes, yes. So uh, anyway, we're talking today about the Unmade Suicide Squad script, but let's talk a little bit about the, the comic book history that has to do with the like, Suicide Squad. So uh, first off, they were originally created way long ago, as you can see here. Uh, they were first created by writer Robert Kaniger and artist Ross Andrew in the Brave and the Bold comics in 1959. Uh, the team leader, as you can see here, was military man Rick Flagg Jr., and the rest were actually regular civilians and scientists, not supervillains. So this was kind okay. of just hmm. uh, Mission Impossible type stuff in the DC universe, and that was about it. 59, so just yeah. before the 60s spy yeah. boom Even kind of shit. Even before Mission Impossible, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. So, uh, but Rick Flagg was always a mainstay of it, but it was not until the 1980s revamp that they said, hey, let's do something cool with this. So Let's it, not, let's make it not lame. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, comic book writer John Ostrander introduced Amanda Waller as part of the government, and it's her idea to reinstate the Suicide Squad but with new types of recruits. So Rick Flagg's carried over as the leader, uh, but this time they recruit the lesser-known supervillains as part of the squad with explosive devices implanted in them to ensure their obedience and the fact that if they do pull off the mission and come back alive, there will be time off from their sentences. 
So okay, so all that's added, and uh, what thirty years later? Yeah, twenty years later, it, it turns yeah. it into a thing because I definitely yeah. would be getting Suicide Squad stuff with the original squad. It was okay. just like, oh, it's just a bunch of spies and shit. Okay, <laughs> yeah. boring. <laughs> yeah, um, but this obviously didn't consist of the A list villains. This was like Batman's Deadshot. Flashes Captain Boomerang, your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I mean, I'm sure he's had like some cool scenes in the, you know in his yeah. in his tenure, but I mean, he's not my favorite guy <laughs> at the same time, you know. Uh, but we're going to talk today about the first attempt at turning this into a movie. So this is not the Ayer cut script. Okay, just putting this out there. This was a previous attempt, dated on February third, two thousand eleven. Oh, okay. So, picture back 2011. The MCU has just gotten started, but the Avengers has not come out yet because that's 2012. Uh, yeah, that's Nolan's right. still in charge of the Dark Knight trilogy. Things yeah. are basically towards heading into the basically all the comic book stuff that we got today. Okay. But it's at the very beginning. It's better stage, better so. times back then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the writer of this is Justin Marks, whose first feature cr- film credit was the masterpiece Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> I don't no. know. I don't know how much he was screwed over on that. Universally panned. I never saw it, but I heard it was terrible. <laughs> However, he's also the creator of the critically acclaimed J.K. Simmons starring series Counterpart. Oh, that actually, I've never seen that, yeah. but. An old co-host of the show, Joey. Yeah, he loves that show. Yeah, that's supposedly I, a really great show. I have a feeling that's actually Marx's true talent. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Suicide Squad script that I was reading is somewhere in between. Okay, that. yeah, those the, the quality of yeah. those two things. Uh, yeah. What's notable is Marx had previously written another comic book script uh, that we'll cover at some point, but the title of that one was Green Arrow. Escape from Supermax. Green Arrow oh, kicks a lot of ass. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that had Oliver Queen in prison in the Supermax prison, among other B-list supervillains there, though there were some cameos from some popular villains in that. Uh, and the warden was Amanda Waller. So that was actually his first crack into the DC universe. We'll probably cover that at some point. Uh, but it sort of foreshadows the Suicide Squad stuff that he does, because that also has prison stuff, and it also okay. has Amanda Damn. Waller. They adapted that, right, if I'm not mistaken, in Arrow, or did, like, kind of an adaptation of it? Kind of, yeah. They did have him, like, they did have him locked up at one point in uh, the season seven, I'm going to say. Yeah, season they're seven. They're not generally locked up, like the Suicide Squad people? I mean, they're in prison. They're trying to get no, se- I'm saying their sentences Green knocked off. Up. Oh, Green Arrow. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Green Arrow. <laughs> like, generally, okay. he's not. Oh, yeah, he's uh, not. But the, yeah. the mm-hmm. villains, yeah. So he was locked up in there, and then Bronze Tiger, uh, Brick. Uh, and a couple other guys were in there. Along Did they with have them. the salmon ladder in the prison, though? No. That's the question. But I think Missed he'd, opportunity. He'd, he'd, still <laughs> do, he'd still do the pull-ups in his <laughs> he cell, He still need to do that pull up. <laughs> I need to get that to CW audience, man. He does, have it. <laughs> he does assault a guy with a copy of the Count of Monte Cristo, though. That was kind of bad. With the salmon ladder bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to incorporate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's, that was the closest oh, that we got to an adaptation of that. So, yeah, that is that is a good point, Alex. But anyway, this is the 2011 version. And uh, another disclaimer, though. Uh, Joker and Harley are not in the script. Yes. So Fuck them. Hmm. Awesome. Out. Fuck them. Uh, we don't need them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Our two this most be- popular characters. <laughs> this, is before, this is before Margot Robbie steps in the role, probably? Yeah, this is 2011. 2011 Margot 11, Robbie's... Yeah. Nobody knows who the fuck Margot Robbie is. In She's probably still in fucking grade school. <laughs> I don't know how old she is. <laughs> She's She's on like Australian television or something at this point. <laughs> in like some teen drama. So uh, we found out, like Wolfie told me that uh, we found out that she likes metal. And then Wolfie was like, you got to stop talking about her right now. He couldn't take that knowledge. Like <laughs> her looking like Margot Robbie and liking heavy metal. It was just too much. She's just, it's too know. good. Anyway, we're not going to talk that much about her because this is not. she's not even involved in this one. This is the 2011 yeah. attempt. And the reason why, it's kind of like, why is Harley not in the script? Well, the reason why is that 2011 is when Harley Quinn debuted in the Suicide Squad. So this is a pretty new idea at that hmm. point. Not even in the what? comics at this point? No. That it was, was the New 52 50. thing, right? Yeah. Alex is uh, right. It's the New 52 yeah. thing where they're just like, Harley's part of the Suicide Squad now. Okay. So it's all due to that. Obviously, by the time when you know Marx was writing this, that was not a thing. 
Was there any, do you have any knowledge on, like, was this, like, a mandate from the studio? What, or did this guy just love Suicide Squad and was like, I'm writing a script for you, WB? Uh, I don't know, I don't have that many details in terms of okay. why, but I think it was like, hey, this sort of somewhat realistic comic book type stuff seems to be our bread and butter with the Dark Knight and all that type of stuff. So why don't right. we try this route that was kind of more of a hard PG-13 R-rated type of stuff right. on air with more morally ambiguous characters. Uh, an easy transition from Nolan verse. An easy transition. Though it's not tied in, but yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, not tied in, but kind totally. of for, for, for audiences to, uh, yeah. to yeah. Yeah, because there's still like unrealistic shit in here. There's people with superpowers and stuff. There's a King guy that boomerangs. So, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have a hard time accepting that, but we'll, we'll go forward. Um, <laughs> so keep in mind as well, Chris Nolan is still in charge of Batman at this point. Dark Knight was 2008. The Dark Knight Rises one year away. So okay. any ties into Batman probably would not have even been happening, even if they wanted to put Harley in. They're just like, Heath Ledger's Joker didn't have an Harley. You can't have her in. Was yeah. this script leaked too? This is an official leak, or like, what's the deal with this? This isn't script? a leak. This is a leak. This yeah. is a leak. By, yeah. do you know who or? I don't know. I mean, sometimes these scripts just kind of come out, you know. German Gianello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love it. Since I'm on this path, anyway. <laughs> he just knew. Uh, he no knew. <laughs> I have no involvement with this movie, but I'm going to reveal stuff about it anyway. <laughs> we got to get on his D&D games, dude. Yep. Uh, right. So let's dive into... Joe, I'll play... If you're show. listening, Joe Manganiello, well, I'll be you're the Indeed listening. Wizard at your uh, game, man. <laughs> D&D game. It's uh, no problem, dude. Let's go, let's go into the script. So we introduce the villains in this. Oh. And so they're different from before. This is not the Enchantress and... Uh, Carol Delavine just doing all this type of, you know, dude. Like everybody shit. hates her, <laughs> but I like I liked her look though. Yeah, but yeah, her belly dancing thing, her acting kind of, you <laughs> yeah. know, whatever. I'm not gonna let's not get too negative about it. I guess, but like the, <laughs> I liked her look. Her design was cool. Yeah, her design yeah. was pretty sweet. Uh, it was originally going to be a different set of villains in this original version. It is Sagat awesome. from Street Fighter. <laughs> they do kind of look like those. There's but yeah, some Onsla crazy, crazy people here. They're named Onslaught. <laughs> so Onslaught is basically a terrorist cell with mutant superpowers. If you think about this, it makes a lot of sense for the Suicide Squad to go up against even worse supervillains, that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, we're supervillain spies, they're supervillain terrorists. So Bad versus evil. Yeah. Right? That's kind of the theme? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back in 1987, as people can see on the video version, they were originally called the Jihad. Uh, Dude, this is just not acceptable anymore. So, man, yeah, tell no, you right it's, now. Not, it's very problematic. <laughs> this is problematic, bro. Oops. Can we onslaught. even show this on YouTube, man? <laughs> they called <it> onslaught. <laughs> Demonetized. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> God damn it! Let's redo this episode. <laughs> you can always edit. <laughs> All right, so let's go into a few. Of we'll the, see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see a few Ooh. of the members. Uh, so the leader is Rustam, who, as you <laughs> see, he can create flaming knives and blades from his hands. So he's oh, the leader that's cool. of that. Uh, next so it's is specifically flaming blades. Yeah. Right, huh? Not just fire in general. No. Okay. It's, gotta be, it's gotta be blades. Alright, okay. whatever. That's so, cool. Uh, let me go back real quick. So, Isn't Onslaught the name of a Marvel character too? Yeah, like that's X-Men related character? We all steal from stuff, you know. Slade know. Wilson, Wade Wilson. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I think this, this guy would be played by Danny Trejo. I can see it right now. Dude, totally. <laughs> right. Totally. He does yeah. look like he could do that, yeah. Uh, next is Raven, or Ravan. I couldn't get the pronunciation of that, but he's an expert with knives. Okay. The knife guy. Yeah, he's a knife guy. Next is Manticore, who's basically the saber-tooth-looking monster dude. <laughs> I'm getting Thundercats vibes. <laughs> that, <honestly>. too. <laughs> Not like Manticore. Thundercats and saber-tooth with a little bit of guar. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. something. And then next is uh, the last member is Jin or Sagat, Dijin, who's basically a digitized man who's kind of a human computer virus. He lives in sort of a hard drive. <laughs> okay, so I Jin, like I know. The, I, look, I don't know like everything about this, of course, but mm -hmm. Jin is where we get the name genie from. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. spirit in uh, Arabic cultures. It's some sort of like that spirit. It's it's somewhat connected to the to Aladdin, the original Aladdin myth mm. or something. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Correct me in the comments, but Jen becomes genie somewhere along the line, mm. and it's not. I Sagat. liked it. 
I liked the picture before, and I was like, is that a genie with an eye patch? You know, I think he's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, those are our members of uh, the Onslaught. Uh, and we start off with them. Uh, these are were originally the villains in Ostrander's Suicide Squad run in the 80s in a storyline called Trial by Fire, which was sort of, it was basically Suicide Squad issue number one. Let's talk about time. our favorites, though, in this lineup. Sure. I think I like Manticore the most. How about everybody else? <laughs> Thundercat guy? I like Thundercat guy. He's, He's cool. He's much for me. <laughs> 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 You're more of a, a knife guy. Yeah, uh, I, I like the, the digital, what, when was this made? Uh, this is 1987. The the script. I mean, not the script. The the comic. The comic. It's very uh, very 80s. Like the computer mm-hmm. thing that can do yeah. anything. Uh, the eye patch. I'm I'm liking the I um the Aladdin uh, genie with the eye patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gin. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm with Zach. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd say. Yeah, he's, he's really cool looking. Favorite. Gin's everybody's favorite. Jin, Jesus. Look, Manticore's a close second. I get. I mean, it. I mean we don't have second. to agree. It's just like, damn. Okay, well, all right. It just well, looks I mean, like Sagat well, so much to me. They're also the two most interesting looking characters. You, the others are just random dudes. Knife guy. Happen- knife guy <laughs> and another guy who can just. Happen. Knife guy is the most useless of them because Danny Trejo already has a sword covered with fire and knives covered with fire. Why do they need You're a right. knife expert? They should have. They should have had at least one other character that's totally different. It needs to be an icicle guy or something. You yeah. Know I mean? yeah. Something. Ice knives. Also, it doesn't help that they both have names that start with R. I got them mixed up occasionally when I was writing the notes. I'm like, well, no, it's not Rustam. It's Rayvan who's got the knives. It's the <laughs> so reason Rustam this is uh, <laughs> this is kind of a D-list uh, uh, you know, <laughs> series right here. So we, we kind of got like a Slipknot situation going on here. Kind of, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In terms of yeah. the, the D-listers, yeah. though. I mean, again, yeah. these are the villains, not the Suicide Squad members. I will say uh, this: I would want a figure of the overdesigned uh, Thundercats uh, villain. I like him. I, I yeah. kind of like. I would. Wouldn't mind that as a figure just to have up there, and people be like, "What is that?" And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's from Suicide what, you never, Squad. You never heard of Manticore? You never heard of Manticore, bro? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that's a D, that's another D and D thing too, by Ig- the way. Ignorance swine. Is, is, yeah. <laughs> right. They're ripping off that name. I mean, it might D and D might have got it from somewhere else. I don't know, but Probably. like, yeah, that's a thing that Joe Manganiello is always playing against. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he leaked the script. <laughs> yeah. so, He's like, oh, I already know this shit, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the original storyline, Trial by Fire, was written by Ostrander, pencils by Luke McDonald, inks by Carl Kessel, letters by Todd Klein, and colors by Carl Gafford. And in both the beginning of that comic and the beginning of the script, Onslaught attacks an airport. Uh, okay. And in the script, uh, they do it to steal a briefcase full of intel because they want the location of a Russian nuclear weapon. Okay. So it's the 80s. Yeah. And fuck the Russians. It's filled with microchips. <laughs> uh, the briefcase is just filled with microchips. <laughs> Bill Gates, strangely, in this uh, series. No, it's, it's, it's all inside of this briefcase that they all steal. And, uh, you know, we The nuclear football? Huh? The nuclear football? Football? You ever heard of that? No. That's a thing like a, in Secret Service type movies where it's mm. the football is basically, a, I don't know, it's a suitcase with a nuclear code, it's a launch code. Oh, yeah, it's the kind of like that. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's to find the location. I think it's the, it. they call it, it the football because they pass it around. Got it. Yeah. It's a MacGuffin, yeah. basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's the setup, who the villains are. Then we meet our main character, who, of course, is Deadshot. Oh hell no! This shot is usually the main, <laughs> yeah. one of the main Suicide Squad guys. Uh, there is no Gotham or Batman reference. It seems unconnected to the Nolan movies, uh, even though there is kind of technically a Nolan vs. Deadshot in Batman Gotham Knight. But we'll save that for another mm, episode. Okay, um, it's true. It says here that he is he operates in Boston. Seems a little bit more boring. Boston. To, operating in Gotham. Go to Central City or something <laughs> cool, man. Uh, DC cities, man. Again, this is set in a sort of somewhat Nolanized, but a little further with superpowers. Type of he's, he's on the roof taking out Harvard grads or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, here he's, Shit. He's, he's going to take out gangsters, uh, but the gangsters he's been assigned to kill have captured him and put him in a straitjacket. Okay. Uh, so he's got basically everything strapped up because they don't trust him because he's an expert with the guns. But turns out that he let himself get caught so that he could get closer to his target, and he shoots his hidden guns through the straitjacket, killing mm. everybody and causing the car to go into the water. And then once he's in the car submerged in water, uh, more gangsters come 
from up above and shoot into the car. He's able to shoot from the water in the car and take them all out from there. From not under the water, though. From under the water, yeah. Well, that's a whole other level, man. He's yeah, holding his sure breath is. the whole time. <laughs> that too, yes. Wait, so the bullets travel underwater? He's got to sort of wrist things. <laughs> he's shooting, his he's bullets do, man. Underwater. That's why he's a superhero. <laughs> or super villain. Uh, super villain, I mean. But, yeah. yeah. It's Will I, Smith. It's okay. I thought this we was We just cooler. accept it. <laughs> I thought this was cooler yeah. than in the air film where he just takes one guy out and that's it. Yeah. Because it just shows even more of his talent. In multiple kills. Right, so, right. Uh, after this, we cut to him visiting to a diner where he has a friendship with a, an 18-year-old waitress named Zoe. This is not a romance. If you're familiar with the character of Deadshot, Zoe is Deadshot's daughter. Okay. But this is different from what we saw in the 2016 mm. film where he's just carrying around his kid and Batman shows up to arrest him in front of the kid and kid's like, Daddy, no, and that <laughs> type of stuff. Shit was, that was when I was like, oh, God, what are we watching? <laughs> oh, this is, <laughs> fucking this is hate a, that scene, man. This is a grown-up Zoe. Uh, she's already okay. an adult, but she does not know that Deadshot is her dad. Okay. Deadshot All has right. deliberately not told her because he wants to keep her away from his lifestyle because he's a hitman, so he wants to keep her safe. Uh, and he uses the money that he got from killing that gangster dude, and he sneaks in a few uh, Benjamin Franklins into her uh, waitress apron. So <laughs> a few Benjamins, huh? <laughs> a few Benjamins, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's to sort of set up like, hey, he's a hitman, but he's not such a bad dude. <laughs> he, yeah. He's trying to take care of this this uh, struggling waitress. So uh, that's true. After yeah. she leaves her shift, Floyd finds that he's not alone in the diner. Amanda Waller is there. Okay. And Amanda Waller brings up that uh, she knows who he is, and he's on her, his guard because he's like most people know who he is, or people he either has to kill or are going to sign him to kill people. Is Amanda Waller generally pretty much evil, or is she kind of go into anti-hero territory as well in the comics? It depends on her methods. <clears throat> right, okay. on how she's written. Yeah, yeah it's generally Very gray, gray area bordering yeah. on evil. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, she's lawful evil she's in the D and D chart. Much, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so she brings up that she could use his talents. He doesn't seem interested, but uh, she brings up that, well, your aim is going to be a little off if you plan to kill me. And he starts succumbing to the drugged coffee he just had. She drugged his coffee in the diner. Okay. And he collapses to the floor unconscious, and when he wakes up, he is now a prisoner at Bell Rev. Oh, shit. The prison where they recruit all the Suicide Squad. And this is where <laughs> we get the opening. <laughs> we were talking about okay. cold opens in the last episode with the Englehart script. This, this is a long cold open just to get to this part. Um, it's not bad. That's fine. There's only one music <clears throat> cue indicated in the script, <laughs> unlike the Eric version. It's like a million. <laughs> that probably wasn't every, his decision, every man. Every scene has a has a uh, no. some sort of track. That uh, was somebody on Wall Street being like, "We got to make it like gotta have Guardians fun. of the Galaxy." Yeah, you know. Uh, so this just says it's "Cage the Elephants." Ain't no rest for the wicked in the opening as nice. he's put through. Uh, processing, yeah. As he's put through Guardians processing of the ga- ca- Galaxy characters are shitty. These characters are shitty. We just put in, uh, you know, music cues every five seconds, like they do. If you think about it, that's how this movie got green. Though, because 2011, they're just like, oh, let's not do this because I don't know. It's let's just do Superman and Batman. Let's do the mainstays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Guardians of the Galaxy comes out in like 2014 or so, and they're like, Huge well, shit. they have these guys who aren't completely heroic or kind of the no people yeah. nobody's heard of. Yeah. A bunch of music tracks. Let's do the same thing. That must have been a gun decision, right? Like, no one really thought to put Guardians, Guardians. of the Galaxy and Oldies in the same fucking yeah, I think button, you know, movie. Yeah. yeah, that's a gun pick. So, no wonder WB is just like, eh, how do we revitalize Suicide Squad? Let's just, just bring that guy back. <laughs> it's just, I forgot how... I, like, how, I have uh, a feeling... Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I have a feeling that uh, th- with this new Suicide Squad movie, I wonder if they're even going to act like the first one happened or not, if they're just going to totally ignore it. I think it's ignored, right? It's pretty much ignored. I think it's done in such a way where it's just like, if you want to be in continuity, it still works because you still have, you know, Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, Joel Kinnaman, you know, Viola Davis, all, a lot of, some of the same people are in this, but yeah. none of the mm-hmm. actual events are acknowledged that much. That first one, I think, is going to be kicked out of canon if this one does well, which it probably will. Probably. Yeah. Kind of like just... an incredible Hulk situation. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, would say I think so. so. Yeah. yeah. It'll be like that. <laughs> so, uh, Deadshot is put through processing and put in a cell next to Digger Harkness, a.k.a. Captain Boomerang. <laughs> the best. <Your> favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that gold tooth. <laughs> Look at this fucking dumbass <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> 
fucking hate this guy. Captain Boomerang. <laughs> he was the uh, worst character. Look, I don't want to say bad about the actor. So he was so wasted. You made a shitload of money. I hope your career does well if you're seeing this. You probably don't give a shit anyway what I it's say. It's his best performance. But but it's just this. It just sucks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it, it was probably a lot of uh, people on Wall Street's fault. So, you know, whatever. I do agree. It is with Alex. It is probably Jai Courtney's best performance because most of the time he's... <laughs> He, most of the time, he's put in these, like, generic, like, lunkhead American roles. Okay. You know, as yeah. opposed to, like, here he can actually have fun. Yeah, in the that's original. true. And, it was, and well, he is Australian, right? Yeah, and he yeah. actually is Australian, so I, I think that's cool. This Captain Boomerang is a little different. For some reason, they made him a metahuman who can uh, create plasma bat boomerangs out of his hands. <laughs> it's yeah. ju- oh, in, this, in the unmade one? In this one, yeah. In this okay, one. yeah, yeah. So he's, like, Gambit? Kind of, yeah. That makes him better... Do you think it makes him better? No. I think it makes him a little better. <laughs> no. You don't think so? Andrew, no. That's stupid. <laughs> Dude, it's better to have a fucking plasma weapon than a goddamn stupid-ass boomerang you're throwing around. They're both you fucking dumb. kidding me? <laughs> In a fight, which is better? I, which guy are you going to go for? If you're neither. picking fucking people. Well, neither. I just want to... I like the <laughs> one that is traditional, I guess. <laughs> That's your, dude, that's it's, I, I, it's, it's a hard pass for me. I'm going with the plasma boomerang guy every time. <laughs> Andrew does have a point that he you don't run into the scenario where he runs out of boomerangs. But that makes yeah. it more interesting, though, I think. Yeah. That's true, too. It depends on... I guess. If, I think if he's a villain, <laughs> right? If he's a villain, the plasma boomerangs make him more intimidating. If he's a good guy you're rooting for, then you have more stakes invested because he could run out of those boomerangs. So that's my stance like, on it. I guess like so, the, man. If we've got an evil... You know, Australian Gambit in DC. I'm I'm down for it. Let's do it. Hey, um, His boomerangs are supposed to come back to him. How does he run out? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> they but they're still they're still not plasma though. Anything, Alex? You're gonna say something? <laughs> oh yeah. Anything's better than what? Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Arrow's version of uh, Captain yeah. Boomerang. Where yeah. he's just like a non-character. He did, they could have made him anybody. Like he just throws boomerangs. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. True. yeah. At, at least, least this version of his personality. Yeah. Yeah. With the um, doesn't he carry around like a pony or something? In this? <laughs> yes, he has a pony <laughs> fetish or yeah. something. A pony. <laughs> in in yeah. the uh, Air movie, or the I should say the 2016 movie, since that's technically not the Air cut. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's carrying on a pony, which people were just like, eh, they just took that from Deadpool. Eh. Oh, I forgot about ponies. that. Yeah. Eh, That's I'm another Wall like, Street interference, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's got the pony, guys. So, uh, we got the, some of the standard people here. Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, Amanda Waller. And uh, next up, we meet Rick Flagg. Uh, Rick Flagg is the team leader. The OG. <laughs> Sorry, what? The OG. He was yeah. the first The most first boring version, character right? in the A or one. <laughs> and he is the most boring character. I think we finally agree on something, Zach. <laughs> Speaking of actors who suck. He is. <laughs> <laughs> he could be listening right now. I don't care. It's not my maybe, podcast. Al- maybe Alex is a guest on this podcast. Just not speak for super Alex has come maybe on not here Joe Manganiello, uh... but this guy might listen. Yeah, Manganiello is definitely listening to us during his D and D game. This guy's got nothing going on. He's come like on, guys. D- Manganiello does not skip the sketches. I'll tell you that much right now. Oh, he loves it. At least he, he shaved it. his goatee for the sequel. Yeah, the, just just real quick, the James Gunn movie does have him take on the traditional Rick Flag look. He looks a lot better in this version. Uh, You're saying Gunn's the, version is better in every yeah, way. Who knew? Uh, yeah. But he's got the yellow <laughs> shirt. Uh, he's more buffed <laughs> out. The more of the because of the fact he's clean shaven, he's got more of the squarish features. He just looks a lot more like the comic book character. This is What's Scott Robo Eastwood Cop? or something. No, this is Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. In Eastwood's kid in this one. In the 2016 movie, the 2016 in the first one, yeah. one. Yeah. okay, yeah. but he's not in the newer one. The, uh, do you guys remember the theories that uh, Clint Eastwood's son was going to be like Nightwing undercover yeah. or something? Yeah, like that? I, thought so. oh, yeah. I forgot. I forgot the evidence for it because <laughs> I almost believed it, and then I saw the movie, and I was just like, Nah, no. I mean, he can't <laughs> act though, so I don't know how that would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> we've never roasted a movie so hard on this podcast I think. but if we're going to do it to any one movie it's going to be this movie yeah, that's man. why you guys brought me we're just getting yeah. started <laughs> I'm the roaster that's my uh, super villain name <laughs> the roaster yeah 
Zach, can you draw, uh, or maybe we need to get Wolfie to get Alex, uh, uh, you know, uh, drawing of him as like a devil. <laughs> oh, I would love that. Yes. With a pitchfork. <laughs> Roasting people. <laughs> uh, so Flag's bed meant to be the team leader. He and Waller explained to Deadshot and Boomerang basically the Suicide Squad concept. Hey, we brought you in because we need you to take down Onslaught. And here's the terrorist cell that are after this Russian nuclear weapon. And in exchange, you get less time off your sentences. Deadshot, being the main character, is all like, this is interesting. Why is Waller turning to us? Because we're a bunch of criminals and not like the actual CIA. Why are they not turning to actual secret spies? The audience is wondering the same thing. So naturally, Deadshot's asking the same questions. And also, why is this military hero, like Rick Flagg, why is he in charge of all this? What happened to him? So he has no powers or anything, right? Yeah. No plasma boomerangs or nothing. Yeah, he's just a regular dude. (laughs) Let's skip him. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so in the meantime Ooh. Onslaught We're back to these idiots <laughs> Onslaught finds out um, That uh, These guys were not in the movie man Oh okay we're going back to the other one <laughs> Onslaught finds out that uh, Our favorite terrorist member Jin Was not able to wipe out all the security cameras And he missed a security camera Which is oh, what man. tips off Amanda Waller That they're around because they get hmm. the security footage So in Can response we- <laughs> How much can we show this this on YouTube? (laughs) Okay, anyway. In response... Well, come on. They're the bad guys. Okay, in response... (laughs) That's even worse. (laughs) In response, Rustam kills Jin. So there goes Jin, our favorite terrorist. No! (laughs) Why do they got to kill Jin? Just rub the lamp one more time. It'll pop out again. He destroys the lamp. (laughs) It'll be all right. He destroys the lamp. He literally throws throws the hard carbon fire. He destroys the lamp. For people at home, Ben just put a skull and crossbones over a picture of Jen, so it's very I disrespectful. That, <laughs> it's disrespectful, dude. He, he's flexing as soon as he comes out of the lamp, dude. Yeah. yeah. He ain't flexing no more. Does he come out of a hard drive? Is that what you said? Yes. So it's like oh instead of a God. lamp, it's a hard drive. Yeah. He's a genie, but instead of a lamp, he's out of a hard drive, and he affects computers and shit. But this not is anymore. stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna How have do you to kill you something that. like that? I wonder. You destroy you rub the, the hard drive. drive? You, you get a fucking drive. magnet out. Yeah, so, you rub the hard drive. I personally thought this was a stupid decision because I'm just like, you got one of the guys who's the most useful. Okay, so he screwed up one security camera thing. You're not gonna need that guy in the future. A guy who right. can like help scramble security shit or hack into the government. You're just gonna yeah. kill him. I'd rather keep him than the knife guy. Well, yeah, oh, for on, sure. Man. Knife yeah. guy yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> knife guy needs work. Come on, guys. <laughs> knife guy might actually be worse than Captain Boomerang. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, absolutely. At least Captain Boomerang is fucking long distance. <laughs> knife guy. Well, maybe you can throw a knife. I guess you can I throw a know. knife. Anybody's good at knives, though. That's like you throw a rock in the DC <laughs> universe. You hit someone who's good with knives. Like, <laughs> 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 I think you're, you're not right wrong, about guys. that. Yeah, you're not Scraping wrong. Scraping the bottom of the barrel, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, Jin is dead, and we go back to Bell Rev, and we meet the rest of the Suicide Squad that's going to be in this movie. So, uh, if you guys are looking forward to this, I bet. By the way, off, real yeah. quick, recap yes. for for you know, people who are new are noob adjacent. Yeah. Bell Rev is like Arkham, but they're not insane. It's not criminally insane. Well, it's like just a regular prison. A secret government facility to house oh, all Oh, yeah, secret government facility. Yeah. Arkham is not a secret mm-hmm. government thing. It's and a public Arkham facility. Gotham. Okay, yeah. all right. Bell Rev is like in the middle of the Louisiana swamp. Oh, so it's near Swamp Thing. Yeah, it's hidden. Yeah, that's okay. it. Could be, okay, could be is, cool. Swamp. Is Gotham, is, uh, is Arkham federally funded or is it taxpayer funded? <laughs> You know? I feel Bruce like Wayne that's funded. <laughs> yeah, right. He's not paying what? them enough. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Should have better security if he's fitting the bill. It's yeah. like, well, I get bored sometimes on the weekends, so <laughs> you guys can uh, go ahead and free a few inmates for me. That'll be good. He unlocks it himself. He's got like a little control thing. It's like, I ain't got anything going on tonight. Let me go ahead and unlock Joker's cell. <laughs> I have a date on Saturday, and I'm not too crazy about her, so if you could just get the Joker out in the middle of it, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. Keep him in there a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Is this guy, I'm sorry, but is this guy is supposed to be a Native American? This guy in the middle here? Um, yes. That's Knife okay. Guy. There's nothing, no, that's not, 
nothing not problematic about this whole thing, <laughs> except maybe Manticore because he's obviously not. He's obviously a monster, yeah. Yeah, not uh, culturally uh, tied to anything. All right, too much. Let's go from the onslaught to the Suicide Squad. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> can't get over the this. great super villains we got here. Let's see who we're going to be able to recruit. Okay. We got a great Batman villain, B list Batman villain, <laughs> and a B list Flash villain. So next we have. Uh, do you guys remember Blockbuster? Nope. Blockbuster. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. This is not the uh, video rental store from our childhood, Just... <laughs> if you're 30 plus. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. N- 90s kids. I mean, not 90s kids. Anybody younger than 90s kids yeah, won't yeah. get it. Uh, Blockbuster is a giant hulking dude who first appeared as a Batman villain. His brother became the second Blockbuster in the comics, but was a lot more intelligent and was a major Nightwing villain in Bloodhaven. Yes. He's mainly I Nightwing. That. Yeah, however, okay. uh, we're stuck with his brother who does not have the same intelligence and is not nearly as interesting. So that's the first blockbuster he was part of this. Uh, next he should have wished for uh, more intelligence from Jen before he died. <laughs> Probably. What? Fucking. Wasn't he a kid, though? A kid that turns into a monster? Or am I imagining that? This blockbuster I'm... character. Um, is he a kid? Like a Shazam, I, like he's a kid that turns into a monster. Well, there is a there is a character that's like a child that becomes like a monster, like Blockbuster. I must be mixing it I up with somebody else. else. Is that there was one in Invincible? Yeah, Invincible yeah. Monster Girl, maybe. Did you see Invincible something like that? that? No, I didn't. This was uh, maybe it's a character that was just made up for the comics. It was in uh, have been, yeah. a Dustin Nugent illustrated one. So I have to look it up later. But I remember him being a kid. He turned into like a big hulking monster, and he stopped. Um, Bane or something like that. So I, I gotta go look it up. Oh, maybe that's. Um, I think I might know. I think that might be the one who um, fights Batwing at some point. Yeah, I think that sounds familiar. I was just yeah. thinking, like, if this is a child when he's not Blockbuster, I was like, is he just sitting in this prison cell? And Amanda <laughs> Waller's like, I got some candy or something. Just playing like, video games. What's got the... a kid in here? <laughs> yeah, I want B T and Xbox. Yes. So nice. <laughs> So this that's is killer Blockbuster. Proc, so. Next one Oops. is Multiplex. <laughs> Multiplex is an image from the Flash TV show. He was in the Flash, where uh, he's a guy who can duplicate himself. Multiplex also related to movies, really, like the n- name wise. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is Jakulai or Jakulai. He's a Middle Eastern speedster, but he's a speedster only in bursts of a few seconds at a time. Oh. Uh, okay. So this is a picture of him from Young Justice Outsiders, uh, where he was part mm-hmm. of that. Uh, next is Mind Boggler, who is a telepath. And, uh, this is from the 80s. Can this is boggle 80s, your mind. She 80s can, punk <laughs> rock shit. <laughs> she can make you hallucinate like her. different shit. Yeah. So uh, that's Mind Boggler. Hardcore. And then uh, the last member is actually a superheroine, uh, and that's Vixen, as shown here from okay. the CW version. Finally yeah. somebody worth a damn. A superhero who can mimic <laughs> the skills of animals. Okay. And she was also mm-hmm. in the Justice League cartoon because uh, there was a love yep. triangle with her and Green Lantern and Hawkgirl. Wasn't there a cartoon that was in the CW verse? Yeah, that too. Okay. Played by the same actress. Oh, okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Up here in the video. Oh, version, that's cool. But yeah. There's like uh, two of them, though, right? Yeah, there's two because she inherits that from her like grandma who joins the Legends of Tomorrow and she becomes the main vixen. She's oh, interesting. okay. Yeah. <laughs> she was just also in a lot more stuff. <laughs> She's yeah, the best true. one so far. Yeah. Uh, so Vixen can inherit or mimic the skills of other animals thanks to a totem she has. She's in prison because, I thought this was kind of weak, she turned on her CIA handler because he tried to make a pass on her. And I was like, so she just killed him? And that's why that feels there could be other explanations she's a, for she's, Is she an anti-hero? Like, I don't know. They kind of make her to be like the best morally out of everybody in the squad. Okay. But this backstory, I'm like, eh, she just over retaliates like a motherfucker I all guess, the time. But it doesn't, it doesn't like really carry over very well into anything else that happens in the present day. It's just kind of a, like, okay, but I feel like there's more to it, and they never explain it. So, like, if you bump into her, she'll stab you in the eye. <laughs> like, she's just al- always over retaliating. Probably, but I mean, I think they thought it was overcomplicated to be like, hey, she's a superhero who had a fall from grace, like in the comics. So they just changed her backstory to be some sort of CIA agent with powers who just killed a dude she didn't like. Yeah, that's lame. <laughs> yeah. He's right, yeah. All right, whatever. Uh, <laughs> each member gets an explosive device implanted in their arms, not in their heads. And the reason why is because that's how it was originally in the comics. 
Okay. Uh, the head, the head is just a lot more visceral though, because you know that it wouldn't necessarily kill him if your arm get, gets exactly. blown off. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why they, they hmm. up the stakes that way. It's not a suicide anymore. Yeah. That it's a just... lose your arm squad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the amp, the amp squad, the amputee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they squad. had explosive bracelets in uh, the original comics. The Amputee uh, Association. <laughs> <laughs> Arm it's fall a different off squad. Boy. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Arm fall off boy is in the gun movie, so he would just be immune to this. Just like, like well, happens to me old every Tuesday. So. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it says if they betray Rick Flag or escape by getting too far away from the proximity of him, they'll detonate. So they got to stay close to him, and they better not betray him. Uh, we also learned that Waller's forming this team because she believes there's a mole in American intelligence who is working with Onslaught. Okay. Which makes a lot of sense because we previous, previously saw that Onslaught knew that Amanda Waller was onto them. How do they know? Because there's a mole. Okay. So I like this because I'm just like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Why would Waller be desperate enough to turn to supervillains? Because she's she, a double she agent. can't trust anyone else. Okay. Uh, All right. So... Their, their mission is to intercept Onslaught to try as they try to hijack this nuclear weapon from a train that's transporting it. Uh, so the squad skydives in using the telepath Mind Boggler as their comm system because all the radio waves are down and stuff. Uh, Russian drones end up firing at them. They do fend them off, but Multiplex is wounded in the process. Uh, Flag says <laughs> they'll try to get him out of there. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but the Suicide Squad knows though he'll only slow them down, so Blockbuster immediately throws Multiplex off the train, killing him to get rid of the dead weight. So okay. that's the end of Multiplex. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. They're all Those dead. Those are killing uh. you, man. <laughs> uh, so next, the squad ends up encountering Russian soldiers, and we get to see sort of the slow-mo sequence where we, quote, see combat the way Lawton sees combat. And it almost feels like a mix of the movie Wanted, where James McAvoy was, like, curving bullets. Nice. I've heard with, of that. I never saw that yeah, movie. Mixed with like Quicksilver's big scene in X Men: Days of Future Past, where everything oh, like, slows yeah. down because he basically shoots the Russian soldiers fire at him, and he shoots not at them but at the bullets to ricochet back at them. <laughs> That's four D chess, man. Yeah, <laughs> word. Andrew, I would I would recommend you read the comic over watching the movie. <laughs> of Wanted, yeah. Of wa- oh, like that was a comic. Movie. Yeah. I don't even know that. Well, I do wanted, too, but I, I like yeah. the comic a lot more. Well, the comic is just like, hey, this is where supervillains are the main characters. Okay. The movie All is right. kind of like, here's kind of the Matrix, but not. <laughs> you know, like, okay. there's a different take. Yeah. Um, next slide is uh, Captain Boomerang does end up fighting the knife guy, Raven. Or Raven. <laughs> Worst fighter. Uh, hey. Knives versus boomerangs. Uh, Mind Boggler <laughs> arrives, though. And saves Boomerang using her, uh, you know, telepathic powers. But Boomerang feels she disrespected him and stole his kill, letting the other guy get away. She, however, is very snide at him and dismisses him. Uh, Later on, Captain Boomerang sees that a soldier is sneaking up on her and deliberately decides to do nothing and allows the soldier to shoot her to death. So Mind Boggler is dead. (laughs) Uh, Next, uh, Deadshot and Blockbuster find Manticore, and uh, Manticore's skin is bulletproof and indestructible, so Deadshot can't kill him. It's up to Blockbuster to do this. So Blockbuster gets to do a big monster fight with him, and despite Mm. Flag's warnings, they both crash out of the train. Because Flag is on a moving train... I'm sure you're going to see what happens next. Blockbuster is too far away, so Blockbuster blows the fuck up, and Manticore, with his indestructible skin, survives. So uh, Blockbuster is dead. Nice. Manticore <laughs> for the win. <laughs> Manticore for the win, everybody. It is the Suicide Squad, so yeah, they, <laughs> they're going to die. Yeah. There's also a deliberate line later, earlier in the script where it's just like, yeah, don't worry so much about keeping track of these characters. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not going to see a lot of them. Isn't the new slogan, like, don't get attached or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many characters in this gun movie, I'm just like, we're probably going to get, yeah. like, half of them dead in Somebody's the first Somebody's dying in the first five minutes, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. betting. Somebody, like, it's going to yeah. be hilarious. Like, uh, maybe Pete Davidson or something. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. So, uh, Onslaught reaches their target, which is the weapon. And the weapon is not a big bomb. It's actually an old man. It's it, Rustam's father. An it old looks man like a Fallout. Brainiac took a shit, and it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Fallout. His name is Fallout. His name is Fallout. He's he fell a lot out of Brainiac's ass. <laughs> <He's> fa- <laughs> <laughs> He's a walking, That's what it looks like. He's a walking human nuclear ball. <laughs> so uh, like camo. My, my claim remains. He's like camo, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> 
So I uh, think he this, looks interesting at least. He looks like yeah. really sick no, yeah. Mr. Freeze. Yeah, that too. A green, <laughs> so a he's green a nuclear version. dude. Yeah. So that's why. So he's mm-hmm. the weapon. He's the weapon. What are his powers? He's a human nuclear bomb. Oh, yeah, okay. But can he shoot fucking nuclear blasts or, like, what does he do? Oh, he just explodes and comes can, back together? He can explode and come back together. Okay, gotcha. But when he explodes, he, it's a nuclear bomb. So if yeah. you're in the vicinity, you're dead. And he he can, like, control it like a mini one? Or is it every time it's blowing up a city? I think he can blow up a city because that's what they're planning to do. But can he do, do smaller ones, too, or no? It's just always a huge one. Mushroom cloud every time. I don't know. we got to bring him on this podcast. Okay, let's know. ask him. Yeah, Joe Manganiello right. knows probably. <laughs> <laughs> We made fun of him too much. Now he's not coming on. <laughs> he hates us now. <laughs> you said that I looked like Brainiac took a shit. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, uh. Uh, so Deadshot and Flag tried to close in to stop basically the human nuclear bomb from being taken, but they end up getting betrayed. They get betrayed by Jack Hulai. Jack Hulai has been working for Onslaught the whole time. This guy looks cool. He looks like a uh, you know, Middle Eastern ninja. Yeah. He's well, got a Deadshot, cool name too. Yeah. Deadshot anticipated it. this guy. Yeah, Deadshot anticipated this betrayal and ends up shooting Jack Hulai. I just want to see... Oh, he gets shot? He gets... Yeah. Jack, Jack Hulai doesn't make it? Well, he's not dead yet, unlike okay. the others. I so want to see Manticore and Jack Hulai fucking go on adventures. <laughs> like a Maybe road that's trip what they should It's like a road trip movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next, <laughs> next is that Fallout uses his nuclear powers to destroy the train to try to kill the squad and make his escape with the rest of Onslaught. The Suicide Squad kidnap the wounded Jakulai with them uh, before the train gets destroyed and crushes in on itself like an accordion, as described in the script, which kind of sounds kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be all right. Uh, but they all immediately get captured by the Russians, who throw them into prison uh, because they believe that the Suicide Squad is responsible for destroying the train. Okay. Uh, Jakulai is captured with them and interpreted by the Russians the, as one of them because he originally was but now he's kind of screwed because he's got two bullets inside of him okay. uh, and is with the squad who now basically are going to torture him to death okay. so Deadshot tortures him in the cell and Jakulai reveals that Onslaught was created because the CIA trained them to go up against Russia during the Cold War Okay. and then when the Cold War ended they turned on them turned them over to the Russians and betrayed them so now they want okay. revenge where'd you get this Jakulai sh- shot Jakulai is young this, Justice Outsiders. It's from the oh, Young Justice, okay. yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Vixen takes on the abilities of a snake whose venom causes people to tell the truth and, you know, sort of injects him with that venom and makes him give up the target of the nuke attack. He dies from his wounds from Deadshot, but not before his last word, which is the name of the city, Boston. Okay. And now we get the reaction of Floyd Lawton, who is now caring about this <laughs> mission because Boston is where his daughter lives. Okay. This is all hell no. And then we cut to <laughs> big Willie we cut style. To, <laughs> we cut to the break. We will find out what happens after the break. Hey, this is Ben from Superhero Stuff You Should Know, and I have an important announcement for you guys. At the end of every single episode of Superhero Stuff You Should Know, you might hear a shout out to our fans. One of whom is Matt Herring, who was one of the original Superhouse fans. He's always given us his support and now it's time that we support him. Uh, We've just recently found out that Matt has been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer and as a cancer survivor myself I know personally that there's a lot of emotional and financial strain that comes into that. Uh, His wife Kelly has set up a GoFundMe account at GoFundMe.com slash F slash Matthew hyphen kicks hyphen cancer 039S hyphen butt uh, and hopefully you can help reduce the financial strain to that as well as some of the emotional strain that comes with that. Again, that's GoFundMe.com slash F slash Matthew dash kicks dash cancer 039S dash butt. Matt Herring was the first, I guess you could say, true Superhouse fan. We were Superhouse at that time. You know, the first fan of this podcast and what we do here and um, has always supported us, talked about us, and um, he's from a town close to where I'm from, and uh, so we share that as well, and just a huge superhero fan, and, you know, nerd like the rest of us, and now he's going through that, and uh, if you could donate just at least any amount of money to that link that Ben just said, that would be truly appreciated just hang in there matt you'll beat this thing soon hi i'm ray and this is my friend alex hi and we do a show called no more whoppers some call it corn we call it therapy 
We're adults with the virility of men. Want to hear us read snack food copy and talk about Japanese chips? Too bad! Join us every month or so on the Greenlight Podcast Network. Lord have mercy, y'all. Do you like hounds? Do you enjoy pooches? Do you find yourself enjoying time spent with that of canines? Talking about dogs, y'all. As you might have heard, superhero stuff you should know has now teamed up with BarkBox. For every month, you get a box for your special canine. Pooches. Or hounds. That's right. One free extra month if you go to BarkBox.com slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Follow the link and you'll get a free extra month valued at $35 and valid for all multi-length plans. So get the BarkBox for your hound, for your pooch, for your canine. Your doggo will thank you. Welcome to Tryouts. I'm I'm Rick Flag, and I'm talking to uh, what's your name, Ten Eyed Guy. The Ten Eyed Man, man. And what's your uh, explain your your power to me? All right, look. So this accident happened, and I was blinded, but I went through this uh, experimental process. Uh, doctor sewed my optic nerves to my fingertips. So now I'm blind in the eyes on my face, but I got eyes on my fingertips so I can see through my fingers. You get it? How do you... This is unrelated. How do you eat? Uh, lots of smoothies. I got some metal straws. I care about the turtles. I don't want no plastic straws in the ocean, but I got lots of metal straws. I just mix everything up in a blender. You know, suck it all down. I don't like to touch things with my fingers. I got a real tact... A real tactile sensation thing going on. I don't like it. How do you open doors? With my toes. One time Batman threw a cactus at me and I had to grab it. Son of a bitch. Hurt like hell. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and be honest with you. This isn't working out. Uh, so my, my question is, it seems like your, your power set, if I'm going to be really generous and call it a power set... Is that you see through your, your hands? Uh, fingertips close enough. It's like having ten eyes instead of two, you know? And how would that help us, exactly? I I could put one hand behind my back and see behind me. I can see in all directions. Yeah, but you could just turn your head. No, those eyes, those eyes are blind up there. Uh, wow, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, thank you for your time, but, uh... You can you can go ahead and see yourself out. Uh, <laughs> Wait, thank, thanks for the opportunity, Mr. Flag. Yeah, yeah, don't ever come back here. All right, uh, KG Beast, uh, go ahead and tell me what your uh, your thing is, I guess. Yeah, so uh, I am part uh, from the KGB, and I have a, a gun at hand, and honestly, I do not know why you are interviewing me. I, you could pick all these other people with superpowers. I just have a gun hand. Just, uh, I, I'm not interested in this squad with you uh, putting explosives in the head. I'd, I'd rather stay in my cell. Oh, uh, that's that's weird. Having some self-esteem issues there. Uh, talking about your. It's not. It's it's not like that. Come on. You think you're better than us? You think you're better than the squad? This is not coming off as I wanted to. All right. Uh, I think you're trying to use reverse psychology on me, KGB. No, no, so no, no this is all honest. This is all honest. Yeah, you can keep saying that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on the squad. God damn it. All right. Uh, crazy quilt. Uh, tell me about your, uh, your power set. Yes, it's me, Crazy Quilt. I'm really wild. And my, uh, powers have to do with color lights. I have color lights on my helmet, and I shine them and hypnotize people into doing what I want. And my outfit is multicolored and crazy. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Um... Anyway, just kind of giving me kind of like rave vibes. I don't know. That's your your power set is just you hypnotize people. I mean, that's that's fairly. I mean, we had some guy come in and interview with us who his power was just he was good with knives. I mean, you're not really offering me anything here. Uh, is that 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 stand your powers? You can just hypnotize hypnotize people and you got a rainbow costume that's pretty much it yes all my crimes are color themed uh, i mean i'm probably pretty good with knives too if i really practiced at it but i really just like shining lights in people's eyes and hypnotizing them into doing crimes for me 
So your power is just you're mildly annoying, like uh, like a small like uh, five year old or something. Like, is that, is that the vibe I'm getting? Could a small five year old have a costume this colorful? Uh, yes, yes, I've seen. Uh, have you ever been to Party City? Um, I've seen lots of costumes like that. It's not really that crazy. If if I would call you anything, it would just be mildly annoying quilt. And what's the what's the quilt thing? I don't I don't see how that really ties into your whole thing. I was an artist, an artiste. After yeah, my I'm, first, I'm just I'm battle. gonna stop you right there. Um, yeah, see yourself out. Um, actually, I got it's security. We'll go ahead and you're you're. I met the Joker before, and you are honestly kind of more creepy than him. So yeah. Just, you haven't seen the last of Crazy Quill! Yeah, I've heard that before. Alright, uh, King Shark, finally! Somebody that might be worth my time. Uh, let's get into this King Shark. What do you got to offer me? Well, I'm basically a big fucking shark, and I can go fucking bite a motherfucker, and I'm pretty much bulletproof as well thanks to this shark skin. Alright, sold. Yeah, you're good. Wow, that was easy! Hey, this is Alex Ramsey, host of the What Mean podcast, and you are listening to Superhero Stuff You Should Know. Johnson's ball sack. All right, everyone, we are back to cover the rest of the Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Jim Carrey over here? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to use the video that we've got here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep doing it, man. You're good. So far, uh, I think we've had more fun talking about this script than we have actually reading or <laughs> experiencing This is like it. Return of the Batman or whatever. <laughs> it's not as bad as that. Not as bad as <laughs> that. 10 plus broads. <laughs> yeah, 10 plus broads. Dude, more the bad scripts picture. always... Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so let's continue talking about this. Uh, the Suicide Squad. We left off with them finding out that the target of this entire terrorist attack with the nukes is going to be Boston which ha just happens to be where Deadshot's daughter is at. So uh, we have a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart between Rick Flag and Deadshot. Uh, okay. No, they do not have a love scene, but what happens is that <laughs> Deadshot <laughs> reveals... That's all I wanted. <laughs> Deadshot reveals that uh, Zoe is his daughter, as we already know. She never found out that that's who her father was and all that type of stuff. Okay. Basically all the stuff I talked about earlier. And uh, Flag's like, well, since we're revealing backstories, let me tell mine. And so he talks about... <laughs> I have a monologue prepared as well. <laughs> uh, he's in this situation because during a military op, he uh, led eight men to their deaths and is considered to be a military disgrace. Uh, and Amanda Waller is basically promising him to get, he can get his stars back if he completes the mission with the squad. Okay. So that's his motivation. So Flag decides after this to trust Deadshot and getting them out of there. So Deadshot leads the escape from the Russian prison, uh, and the squad has to actually work together this time rather than try to kill each other. Uh, after they get away, Flag contacts Waller, figuring that whoever put Jakula in Bell Rev is the mole. And so Waller traces it back to a politician named Senator Cosgrove, who's planning to run for president. And, okay. Uh, Flag and Deadshot are like, well, we're going to have to pay him a visit. And Waller says, you're asking me if I can get you and three dangerous felons within reach of the possible future president of the United States? Give me a few minutes. And okay. so, in the next scene... <laughs> That's going to be in the trailer, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. They attacked the senator in his hotel room. He reveals he was planning on allowing Onslaught to arrive in the U.S. only for troops to stop them in order to show the country how much they need him. So he's kind of using this to enhance his political campaign. His okay. one problem is that this is a terrible idea because uh, his basically his t response team is no match for these you know, this terror cell of metahumans. So they all get slaughtered. <laughs> and he's just like, whoops. So <laughs> Where is Manticore during all of this? <laughs> Manticore is killing people. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cosgrove awesome. reveals that they're going to attack on the 4th of July and tells them they have to stop them. And they're just like, no shit. So uh, <laughs> Deadshot, Flag, Vixen, Boomerang all work together to get out of here unscathed. Okay. Uh, Onslaught is going to detonate everything in the Old North Church. Uh, symbolic because it's one of the locations where the lanterns were hung to signal that the British were coming. Okay. Uh, so the Suicide Squad go after the church where Fallout begins to start, you know, charging up to detonate the nuclear bomb. And as Deadshot has the leader in his sights, the man, you know, Rustam, the leader says, ah, the man who never misses all your life, you've been perfect. There was only one mistake. And he reveals that he has kidnapped Deadshot's daughter. So okay. Zoe is now hostage. Shit's gotten real. And he He's basically kidnapped her in order to make a deal with Deadshot. Basically saying, this city, for your daughter, you get to take her and leave. And Deadshot's like, well, any other day, I would have been like, hell yeah. 
but not today because I mean he's a villain, right? So he wouldn't really give a shit about mm. Boston, but because he's on this mission, uh, and he wants to show the best side of himself to his daughter, okay. he makes another choice. So okay. the squad and onslaught start fighting while Manticore takes Zoe away. Uh, Captain okay. Boomerang has a rematch with Raven, the uh, the knife guy. We got two of these fucking matches in this movie. <laughs> what the fuck? But, but, <laughs> this is the fucking most it's useless kind of, shit. But Vixen helps out. And Boomerang. Well, at least there's up, that. Vixen uh, ends up hate, almost boomerang? dying. Yeah. <laughs> boomerang ends up saving her life by cutting down a bell, causing it to crush Raven to death. So he's dead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Flag and Rustam have a chase through the tunnel uh, underground. Rustam seems to think he's found Flag on the other side of a wall and forms a fiery blade and tries to stab it through, only to find out that he stabbed his own father, Fallout, which kills him and defuses the bomb. So let's. So Rick Flag again. It's just a guy that can shoot guns. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, we have a gun. gun he's a gun knives. guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe he should have been against the guy. Gun guy, knife guys. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Knife to a gunfight. Yeah. 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 So, he could have made that little <laughs> remark. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, writing a better script right now. Just talking. <laughs> Deadshot uh, <laughs> chases after Manticore to get his daughter back, uh, but Manticore's hide is bulletproof. Deadshot only has one live round left and struggles to load it into his gun as Manticore gets closer and closer to him. And just as Manticore closes in, Deadshot brings his gun right up into Manticore's mouth, making the monster freeze. And Deadshot's like, well, soft on the inside, huh? And then he fires and blows Manticore's brains out. He had a good run. Nice. He had Sorry, a good Manticore. run. So that's the end of him. Uh, Rustam is the only one left. He takes the truck with a Zoe in it, and the squad go after him with Flag, having to be close to Deadshot to prevent him from exploding because... Flag's best friends of Deadshot now after their prison talk earlier. <laughs> so, after they exchange monologues. All it takes. Yes. <laughs> so, One of them must be named, uh, their moms must Martha. be named Martha. Martha, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So Deadshot takes oh, a motorcycle man. to chase after Rust Dam and save his daughter. He gets into the back of the truck and shoves Zoe to safety before Flag deliberately crashes into Rust Dam's truck to stop him. Uh, both Rust Dam and Deadshot survive the crash and have a showdown. Uh, gun to a flaming knife fight. So Deadshot hesitates from just shooting Rustam because he sees Zoe's there and this is the one thing he didn't want Zoe to see. The killer okay. inside of him. Then we get the good old ending of a shot rigging out and Rustam dies because someone else shot him. It was Rick Flag. Personally, I thought it was way too easy. He I, shouldn't have been, should have made it this far. He's, yeah. <laughs> Rick Flag <laughs> Should have died pretty early on, in my opinion. <laughs> but this, I'm also guy, just like, this guy sucks. He should have just been Deadshot shooting him. <laughs> Deadshot should have killed him in the first five minutes. Flag? Well, then, yeah, but then he would have been blown up. Yeah, still, though. They gotta protect <laughs> Flag, or else they all get killed. All right, I guess. Anyway. Still, though. Uh, they should have just had Deadshot shoot the guy in front of the daughter and then deal with the consequences, where it's just like, yeah. I, like, how dark of an ending would that be? But it makes sense, because he's a villain, you know? Yeah, yeah right? Like, hey, like, yeah. I am what I am. I'm a killer. Do something unexpected, assault. yeah. Yeah. And it just, bam, just kills him. Uh, but anyway, Deadshot gets a heart to heart with his daughter, saying, "I'm gonna come back," and she asks, "When?" She seems oh, surprisingly like chill. Don't shoot daddy or some shit in the movie. <laughs> <There's> no, <laughs> I don't want to fucking kill myself when I was watching that shit. <laughs> uh, he and the squad escape. She seems relatively cool with the fact that she just found out that her dad is a uh, super villain and has been working against this terrorist squad full of superpowered people. <laughs> uh, but She's anyway. In shock. Yeah, he and the squad escape, <laughs> and the police arrived. Uh, the senator from before resigns and withdraws from the presidential race. Uh, Rick Flag, Andrew's favorite, gets his bronze star <laughs> and letter of commendation. Can't tell who's worse, him or Captain Boomerang. <laughs> but decides to continue. It's a toss-up. <laughs> they're both going to show up in the sequel that'll never get made to this movie. but Because <laughs> right. they both survive. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. And they're both going to be in Gunn's <laughs> movie, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> At least Gunn will do something interesting with him, probably. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Flag decides he's going to continue leading the Suicide Squad and doing things off the grid. And at the very end, Flag has Lawton transferred, but secretly packs his guns so that Lawton can escape. The final lines of the script are, Like Flag, he's finally accepted himself for what he is. A criminal bastard. Flawed as hell, but capable of good. And maybe that'll be good enough for now. Flawed as maybe, hell. Maybe, maybe. Flawed Floyd. is the unmade Suicide Squad script. Hmm. Okay. What do you guys think? Let's start with... Uh, Let's start with Alex. It was, uh... That's certainly a movie, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the question is, how do you think it compares to other Suicide Squad movies, including the 2016 movie or the animated ones? 
I mean, it's better than what we got in 2016, but that's kind of like, as Andrew was saying, it's kind of a low bar to clear, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. There were parts of the script I did like. Like, there, it had its moments. Like, I was like, oh, okay, it's, like, kind of interesting. You know, some, some elements of it, some of the action scenes, like the accordion uh, train sequence was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But, like, overall, like, I'm like, eh. Like, Assault on Arkham, I think, is, like, it's not a perfect movie, but it is basically, I'm like, I don't see how you could make a bad Suicide Squad movie when you have the blueprint of that movie right there. Like, it's right there. You guys own it. Just just make that, but, mm -hmm. like, live action. Like, that's it. That's what, what you do. But, mm -hmm. um, it, it was okay. Like, uh, it's not Return of Batman bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one goes back to being fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was but, at least more yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 But the Aaron, um, it's not quite Aronofsky's uh, Batman Year One. I feel like yeah. that's like probably one of the best movies uh, never made. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I liked it. Like I would watch it. I don't know why. I had this thought recently. Like so, like obviously we have Superman, like Reborn, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like why doesn't DC just take like they own the scripts? Why not just take a lot of these unproduced movies and just adapt them into animated movies? Like it's right there. Know. Like yeah. just do it. They hate money, man. We talk about this all the time. They love <laughs> disappointing fans. Yeah. And they hate yeah. money. <laughs> they, hate, they just hate it. They can't stand it. They try to stay away from it. <laughs> right. <laughs> can't stand it. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Zach, your thoughts on this script? Well, I do like that so many of the team members die throughout the movie. That's the best and part. And actually it fits the name. the best part, yeah. yeah. Uh, because I feel like in the 2016 version, wasn't it just like, the Slipknot guy died? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was yeah, he the right? only member of the Suicide Squad that actually died? El Diablo so. at the end. Who? Yeah. Exactly. Did he die? <laughs> yeah. I thought he just turned into fire. Maybe he's all right. I don't know. <laughs> Go check but yeah, the, the fact that they're, they die throughout <laughs> it is much more like what I, I would expect. And I do like that they are fighting against another team. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever they're problematic name maybe that a lot of them come from okay, i wish <laughs> i uh, well i see the visuals the, the listeners at home do not but <laughs> i just wish that some of them are more interesting looking because mm -hmm. for me i mean it's not just for an artist but anybody that is like reading a comic or seeing a movie that's comic book based you want those characters to be visually interesting and a lot of them other than uh, Jin and Manticore just looked kind of lame. They just looked like normal people. <laughs> and I I want yeah. someone to look interesting if it's, like, super-powered. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, you know, whatever. I, as far as the team members go, some of them were interesting and some of them weren't. It's just like the movie. But I will say, yes, uh, I do believe that it is slightly better than the actual film that we received. Mm-hmm. Andrew. There's not many movies I've seen in the theater that are worse than Suicide Squad. There's a few. <laughs> Freddy Got Fingered is one of them. <laughs> fucking hate hated that movie. I never saw Catwoman. I, I knew that was. I mean, the reviews were terrible from the from the get go. Um, so I mean, yeah, this script was better than that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd say a lot better actually. Yeah, it's yeah. not great, but it, it's a lot better than that extremely low bar of a film that we got. Mm. Uh, I mean, it has Manticore in it, so that's cool. <laughs> you, just, you just learned who he was today. <laughs> I know, but he's like, I, I think he's cool. He's cool. <laughs> he's cool now. He's cool. He's cool, dude. Can you can you, can you imagine like they fucked up Sabretooth and fucking the X Men movies? Yeah. Like we haven't gotten like Crazy Catman in a movie yet. Yeah. All they had to do was just basically do the same thing here, except it's Manticore, so nobody really has any expectations. This is a he might look and, like, terrifying like that Cats movie though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if they make him scary, it'd be kind of cool. Like he is a monster, yeah. so that would be That's would be kind of sweet. Um, so yeah, train sequence probably the best, and uh, yeah, I wish they made this one. I mean, as we all know, it probably wasn't Ayer's fault, yeah. uh, and that's that. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I think that the the highlight of this is the train sequence in terms of just like how many die, and you're just like, oh shit, this is what it's supposed to be like, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the feeling that you get in the original Ostrander run anyway. Right, and then afterwards, it kind of just feels a little rushed. We're just like we're in prison, but we got to get out, and then we're going to stop this terrorist attack, and it's the end of the movie. I'm like, uh, could have done a little more with this type of stuff. Some what? more surprising deaths and that type of stuff. Why are they going after Deadshot's daughter in particular? 
uh, they figure he's the only she's the one that they have leverage over probably because of the fact that he has family living in that city and why do they want to get leverage over the suicide squad so that they don't get stopped by them I guess okay alright it's basically a way to bring in <laughs> the daughter aspect into the finale. That's the I, main thing. I get it. I'm just trying to see how all this clicks that's together. That's the best way to do it. I know, so. I know. But still, I'm just, trying, I'm just asking questions here. <laughs> he was too busy thinking of motivation. funny things to say. He didn't pay attention. <laughs> that's, that's, that's generally what's happened. That's what happens. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, you figured me out. So uh, <laughs> we're hopeful that the James Gunn movie is going to be even better, you know, a lot better than what we got in 2016 and yeah. in the script of 2011 but until then that is superhero stuff you should know all right so we have a few uh fan comments to go over for everyone let's go into this first one stanwood 32 says once again you all nailed a great episode great information about the bat fleck also really funny skit in the beginning guess Woo! who also <laughs> listens to this guy someone listened <laughs> <laughs> there you go you have a special place in heaven Thank you, Stan. Sketch Says, listeners. You all rock. Thanks, Stan. All right. Thank you, Stan. Uh, now we have a much longer uh, one Ooh, from Lord. Jen Kelly. This is uh, These are all comments on our coverage of the unmade Batfleck versus Deathstroke movie. Okay. So Jen cool. Kelly says, quote, thank you guys for reminding me. Love the episode. I agree with Ben. Hashtag the real Batman. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> the real Batman. That if the movie had been done at the expense of Batfleck's health, I'm fine not seeing it. Being a person who has struggled most of my life with addiction, I can get behind that. Honestly, do not think it will never happen. I think Batman is too much of an icon for this movie to never happen. I'm sorry, but if anyone thinks RP is going to be an awesome Batman, they're pissing in the wind. Uh, <laughs> Somebody haters, dude. Uh, okay. I, someone's really hard, hardcore about Batfleck. Uh, I hope I eat my words, but you guys can see the writing on the wall. I just think the whole Snyder Cut, the films that never came to fruition, can be done with enough fan support. Not force, but support. I feel the same about Neil Blomkamp's Alien 5. Love the show, guys. Please keep it up. I look forward every week to hear from superhero stuff you should know. I cannot type S into my devices without the show popping up as nice. the first suggested title. Uh, mm. His S is green, and as a bonus, I get to kill Batman. Godspeed, gentlemen. Awesome. Interesting. I, I mean, everybody hated uh, Batfleck at first, too. Like, there sure. wasn't a single person, I felt like. I mean, other than us, maybe. I don't know, but... <laughs> yeah, probably us. <laughs> but it, I, I felt like... I, th I didn't meet a single soul that liked Batfleck at first. And then the movie came out, and like, everybody fucking loves his ass. Yeah. So I feel like... I don't know. We'll see what happens with Pattinson. Yeah. It's just repeating itself with this. Yeah, yeah, it's over and over and over. People hate it, but it's just like... I don't know, man. I just... That trailer was amazing, and yeah. I think we'll, I think yeah. it'll be fine. As I've said before, I almost don't want there to be another trailer. Yeah, I don't, I don't want, want to just either. be like... Leave it with that, and then leave all of it a surprise in 2022. And don't watch new rock stars and their well, and their breakdown of the fault. trailer. This guy <laughs> has, and I think he's actually done it. And I'm trying to forget the things that he figured out, but he f seemed to figure it out all the Riddler shit, and I think he's right actually. Uh, so don't watch yeah. that if you haven't yet. Yeah, hmm. ends up being wrong a lot. I, I I like new rock stars, but like, yeah. I hope he's wrong. Yeah, he probably will be. All right, next is this essay, so it's going to... <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. Need my reading DMC. glasses. I do yeah. want to reward people who leave, like... That's true. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. really <laughs> thoughtful comments. Yeah. Um, don't, I was going to say really long comments, but everybody can cheat that and just write a bunch of nonsense. So really thoughtful. Thoughtful, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, DGMC says, I think Affleck's Batman film, using the basic story beats of the game with some tweaks, really could have worked well and not been seen as an obvious ripoff. So, this is their attempt at making that happen. The life-changing event starts at Bruce's surprise 50th birthday party, where Alfred invites Barbara, who hasn't seen or talked to Bruce since Robin's death. In the following days, Wayne finds his business and finances suddenly in disarray. Alfred is found dying of a stab wound, so Bruce goes to the Barbara after burying him, which leads to Deathstroke and his men going after them both. Barbara reveals to have been forced into the game, as she drugs Bruce to ensure her father's safety. Bruce wakes up inside Arkham, wearing a bat suit stripped of its gadgets. After interacting with rogues like Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler, Ivy, and Firefly, Bruce uses them to stage a riot that allows him to escape. Now living on the streets due to him being his home being foreclosed, Bruce meets with Gordon to talk about him being Batman and Barbara quitting as Batgirl the decade prior. Out of nowhere, Gordon dies as he has been poisoned. Jesus. Okay, furious that she has been duped, Barbara holds Bruce hostage and brings him to Deathstroke's hideout, demanding a meeting. 
While Barbara blocks the door, Batman and Slade have their confrontation on a rooftop. We learn that Deathstroke's vendetta centers around the death of his son during the last battle with Batman. Bruce tries to apologize as it was an accident, but Slade is having none of it as he overwhelms Batman. Barbara stops Deathstroke from killing Bruce before fending off the goons. Seeing Deathstroke is distracted, Bruce tackles him off the building but manages to hang on to the ledge while Slade falls into the darkness below. Barbara helps Bruce up, and then they reconcile as she no longer blames Batman for Robin's death, and sees he has emerged from the dark place that uh, she left him in. Following Gordon's funeral, Barbara and Bruce have one last beer together in the Batcave in honor of those they've lost, and then go their separate ways as Barbara has been inspired to return to crime fighting, albeit as a solo act. We get a post credit scene of Slade having survived the fall, of course, as he reconciles with his ex-wife Adeline, before being called by Billy Wintergreen to meet. As Deathstroke leaves, Talia al Ghul is seen watching from a distance. Wintergreen? Wintergreen, your favorite. Wow. Yes, Wintergreen. <laughs> So what was this a fan fiction or what this was this fan fiction? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Of okay. how the bat like maybe we could work using some of the same story beats from the game. So some of this is inspired okay. by the game, the David Fincher movie that it was inspired by. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, in terms of the cast, uh, Jody Comer as Barbara Gordon, Lena Headey as Catwoman, uh, Anthony LaPaglia as Penguin, David Wenham as Riddler, Anna Kendrick as Poison Ivy, Jonathan Tucker as Firefly, uh, Peter Mensa as Rosal Ghoul. Carla Gugino as Adeline Kane, Brendan Gleeson as the voice of Billy Wintergreen, and Natalie Emanuel as Talia Al Ghul. That's his proposed <laughs> cast. Okay. Cool. Uh, nice. thank, thank, thank you very you much for, comment. for that yeah. uh, thoughtful comment yeah. on that. That's really cool. Uh, over to you, Andrew, on to oh, the shout outs. Man, don't you know it? I'd like to thank our <laughs> thank you for those comments and thank you for our Patreon supporters at the five dollar tier. Oh no no no. The one dollar tier and five dollar. Shasta, Leom O, Super Inframan, Douglas P, Dan D, Aaron Willett, Nick Noir, Jesse E, Jeffrey R, Scott V, Askers Webb, Jeremy H, and our other supporters, Sparkageddon, STCT Productions, Robert Schumann, Kooky Noms, Matt Herring, Elijah B, Shamrock Balls. He was gone for a while, but he came back, huh? Shamrock so. Balls. I think uh, yes. he had a yes. uh, <laughs> the, the triumphant return of Cham- Shamrock Balls. Ian H. <laughs> Walter the Wobot. Of balls. Walter the Wobot, John Wells, <laughs> and Rye Guy. By the way, I thought we had doubled up. I thought John Wells and Rye Guy were the same guy. Wait, why? But I thought it was like uh, uh, he was commenting as John Wells on Facebook and Rye Guy on Twitter or some shit. But then I saw them talking to each other <laughs> on Facebook. It's like, oh, this is fucking, this is two different guys. <laughs> I was just, I just doubled up the names. I mean, I just said the two names just in case, but I was just thinking in the back of my head. It was, it was the <laughs> same dude for a while. Um, all right. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, they're interacting on, uh, on Facebook. Um, anyway, talking to himself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To uh, mm-hmm. split personality, <laughs> it's possible. Uh, so yeah, uh, Patreon.com/slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Uh, get th- get on the one dollar tier to get your name on the board, and uh, get the five dollar tier uh, is where you get a whole new show, deep dives every Friday. This show, as you know, if you subscribe, is uh, on uh, every Monday. And the Patreon one is every Friday, so please check that out. And please check out our merch, artwork by Wolfie, Wolfie Cruz. And that's uh, superhousepod.redbubble.com, superhero stuff, pod.threadless.com. So get your mugs, get your shirts, get your shower curtains there. Leave us a review on iTunes. Please record us some shit and send that to superhousepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, please animate our sketches, hashtag it please. I'm Thunderwolf Drew on fucking everything. And uh, thunderwolfdrew.com is my new website. Check that out. Um, and uh, also Thunderwolf Lives on uh, YouTube. Check it out. All my other shit there. And um, Amano Recon, that's A-M-A-N-O Recon. R-E-C-O-N. I'm on a recon.com. I am in pre-production right now to uh, shoot something that is basically an R-rated uh, sci-fi horror comedy. Think Power Rangers meets X-Files, hmm. but it's R-rated. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's going to be an Indiegogo campaign coming up uh, soon. And uh, check out the website, I'm on a recon.com. That's it, Ben. Another shout out to Comic Capital on Instagram, as well as the Everything Entertainment Club on Clubhouse. Also, shout out to Vic Bizane Art on Instagram, who was a little ahead of us and actually sent this script over, the Justin Mark script, oh, not knowing yeah. that I already had it planned on the schedule. So this but is kind of a fan request. Kind of, but it was already. And then also Alex is a fan, so. Okay, yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. 
So uh, thank you guys. Uh, Twitter, <laughs> we oh, are Superhouse Pod, but everything else, we are we are superhero stuff Pod until we can figure out how to change our Twitter handle. Uh, but uh, we need to get a whole new one ins- probably. Instagram is point. Superhero Stuff Pod. TikTok Superhero Stuff Pod. Vero Superhero Stuff Pod. Mm. My website is BenWanRider.com. Uh, my YouTube channel is in the description below. You can also check out the uh, website for my kids' comic, Early Bird, at Earl hyphen E hyphen Bird. Duck is Alfie in that? Alfie is not in that. He did not exist at the time of the writing. Oh, okay. Mm, All yeah. right. uh, but you can follow Alfie at Alfie Pennyworth Cat. He's my uh, furry <laughs> cat named after Alfred. Uh, but if you have an Alfie or your own little cat, <laughs> then if you have an Alfie yourself you at home, get Whisker Box. Get a little treat box for your cat every month. And if you have a dog, that's cool too because we are affiliates with Bark Box, if you're, as you heard in the break, where we have a little bit of a promo uh, link that you can use in order to get your first month free if you remember loot crate and then i'm sure they're still going but they yeah. were huge like 10 years ago mm-hmm. it's like that for your cat yeah. or your dog yeah so like a like a gift box with food and shit every month all the all the toys as well toys too yeah yeah, yeah. don't the forget about uh that. bird box and bubble box yeah, bubble box especially for your, <laughs> <laughs> your fish i forgot about bubble box <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, they, need, they need a they need a bubble box. That's hilarious. It should be yeah. Uh, superhero stuff slash shop is where you can find a whole bunch of the affiliate links, including eBay, Amazon, especially specific Amazon products that we have up there. So, yes. Uh, and then my personal Instagram is Ben Juan Ryder. and I believe that's it for me. Over to Zach. If you'd like to see more of me, if you haven't grown tired of me yet, and you want to see more <laughs> of my artwork. You can just go to ZacharyJacksonBrown.com. Ooh, Oops. that's uh, oh, yep. for the there people watching on YouTube. You got some good shit to look at. <laughs> uh, you can go to, like I said, my website, ZacharyJacksonBrownArt.com, and you can follow me on YouTube, on Instagram, and on TikToks. Zachary Jackson Brown Art Woo. is the name. Nice. Hell yeah. All right. And then over to Alex. Please plug uh, all your stuff in terms of social media, where they can find your podcast, all that stuff. Sure thing. Um, so just my only social media I have for the podcast is uh, What Mean Podcast. You can find me on Instagram. I need to update it. Um, but like I'll, I'll have, I have like short clips of the podcast, that kind of thing. You can message me on there. And um, I have um, What Mean is on spotify uh soundcloud and uh itunes but um like joe rogan uh tangential exchange is a spotify exclusive nice. um, well i wish i had as much well it was on soundcloud <laughs> before but anyway um i wish i had as much viewers as he did uh but um hopefully Shh, we all. that'd be <laughs> yeah. all we did yeah. that's, all, that's a lot of money if we had that kind of viewership yeah, but um, if you want to find me, um, I'm on there. I, uh, like I mentioned before, um, I get drunk on one of them and just talk about <laughs> different, like different nerdy <laughs> things, basically. And it's it's actually fun. We uh, every time we go off topic, we have to take like a drink of whatever we're drinking at the time. So as you would imagine, we get very drunk. So uh, <laughs> wow, perfect. So yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have you guys on, actually, one time either. Nice. I know I'm going to have you soon on What Mean, so yep, I look forward shit. to that. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's it awesome. for me. Definitely. And as you guys just heard, we are doing a crossover episode with Alex's What Mean podcast where we'll be talking about the uh, Superior Suicide Squad movie <laughs> to this, which is Batman Assault on Arkham. Yeah. So that's yeah. the Arkhamverse. So if you guys want our coverage on that, that's going to be on Alex's show. Uh, all to tie into the upcoming Suicide Squad movie. And just to bring it all home on our Patreon for this week, we're going to cover another Suicide Squad movie. Don't worry, it's not this one. Uh, it's going to be <laughs> Suicide Squad Hell to Pay. Okay, I've never seen that one, I don't think. I'm excited. I haven't okay. seen it either. You should yeah. check it out and let me know. Because I personally, that one... That's the best one. I think that's one's the best. Oh, i got to check it out. Man. Okay, yeah. all right. Did so, not know that. Check that out. But until then... I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about us. <laughs> We're getting it, baby. Get it. Indeed. <coughs> Superhero Stuff You Should Know is part of the Greenlit Podcast Network.